I would like to introduce Peter Cray, who's going to introduce a, a panel of financial services folks. So Peter, come on up. Good morning, everybody. Glad we had a good theme song. The boys are back in town. So permit me to introduce my, uh, my colleagues here. Uh, the guys are on the panel for our financial services discussion. To my direct right is Grant Richard of Goldman Sachs. He's the Managing Director of Global Data Center Engineering Operations and Provisioning. Also manages cross-platform Linux, Windows, server, hardware engineering teams. And in the past, uh, he was a participant in open compute contributions, including the 19-inch form factor Roadrunner, uh, Roadrunner servers, and others. Next is Bob Thurston of Fidelity. Bob's a director of integrated engineering and responsible for innovative and emerging and disruptive technology across all infrastructure silos. Next is Matthew List, now at JP Morgan, managing director of cloud development and responsible for building out JP Morgan's cloud platform infrastructure. Next is Justin Ehrenkrantz of Bloomberg. He's the head of compute architecture and responsible for Bloomberg's strategy and direction around next generation infrastructure. And confidentially, he was previously the president of the Apache Software Foundation for many, many years and a big contributor. I promise I won't say that publicly, Justin. And last is, an, is a new joiner for Open Compute. He's Brian Armstrong of Capital One. Title is Director of Open Compute Tech Innovation and Next Gen Infrastructure. Okay, so to get things started on the panel, um, I want to just do a little, like, one or two minute context kickoff. And uh, what I'm going to talk about is a, is a highly compressed version of a blog post I did for uh, Kyle Foster at Big Switch about why I think Open Compute is the Khan Academy for enterprise infrastructure people. So here's just a couple of, couple of sound bites to start things off. So to set the context and the kickoff for our panel's discussions, first opening, opening discussion, to me, Open Compute is the Khan Academy of hyperscale open infrastructure. For the first time ever, Khan Academy provides free and open access to an amazing range and growing group of self-educational resources. And this is exactly how I think about open compute for the enterprise IT world. Luckily for enterprise IT technologists, we can now freely and openly learn tons and attend events like today's and this week's. And thankfully, since the beginning of open compute, a great group of financial services colleagues here today began to engage, explore, and contribute since the very, very early days of Open Compute back in 2011. And we've also collaborated directly with people like Facebook, Open Compute, Microsoft, and other hyperscale contributors. Okay, so per the above, let's get started with Grant Richard on our first panel segment talking about Open Compute hardware. So Grant, looking back to the start of Open Compute in the summer of 2011, currently what's up with OCP's hardware practice? What has financial services observed as key benefits, learning points, connections, and other key open compute items? What is the key open compute tipping point? How and when do we see the majority of our financial services infrastructure becoming open compute? So please provide us some open and direct feedback on the contributions. Grant? So thank, thank you all for being here. Um, I, I remember uh, I was listening to Jay's presentation in the first uh, 2011 uh, uh, Open Compute's uh, summit for the announcement of, of the effort. Um, I, there were two things I remembered from it that he didn't mention. The first thing is there were two vendors. There were actually two pieces of hardware there. And the second, it was barbecue day in the cafeteria. Um, what was very impressive is, is that we had two pieces of hardware. Everybody was crowding around these two sort of card tables with, with the uh, OCP sleds. And, and it, if you bring it forward to what we see now, as you walk around the exhibit hall, you see incredible hardware. You see sort of the classic OCP hardware, you see sort of the Microsoft contributions, and you see the 19-inch form factors. You see these across all of the vendors, and you see it running really fantastic software. So I think you know we've come a long way, and it's becoming a really uh, uh, vital segment. Uh, the way that we think about this, the, you know, the, the hardware, and, and we're going to continue to, to purchase hardware, and this goes to sort of the question on the tipping point, we really view this as, as an inevitable thing to happen. And the reason for that is up at top, we see sort of a very uh, active market for software-facing customers. And this software is created by sort of the next layer down, which is an amalgam of services, products, microservices, a bunch of things glued together to form those applications. Underneath that is 
a virtual infrastructure for compute, storage, networking, and, and data services. And then under that is where OCP comes in because that's really the hardware engine for all of this. And we see ourselves both, you know, either uh, as we consume the public cloud or the private cloud, uh, which is hosted internally, we still see that we'll be consuming hardware, at least for, for, for the very near future and probably way into the future. Now, uh, it took us a while to, to uh, uh, consume the hardware. We worked on the 19-inch form factor. Um, it was really a give and take with, our, with the vendor in the ecosystem. First of all, we had to make some changes. We had to learn how to consume hardware that didn't have as much uh, vendor preparation and, and vendor, uh, um, you know, um, uh, engineering maybe. Um, we had to work more closely with our su suppliers. So from, from a company, we, we changed a bit. And on the other side, our vendors are changing a bit, and of course HP was a, you know, was, was, was a big change here, where we have a, a vendor who's understanding what it means to supply OCP hardware as well as continuing their existing revenue stream. Okay. Uh, some of the other folks, uh, I'll wrap this up in a second, some of the other folks are, are, are you know, from the bottom up are, are struggling with sort of how do you deal with enterprise customers right. uh, because they typically deal with hyperscale and cloud folks. Cool, thank you very much. Bob? So I'll just add a couple of things. So I think, you know, the hardware, I think, is as to when it's going to turn. I think, I think it's going to turn very soon. As I look out on the expo floor, um, I'm starting to see the equipment that we can absorb. I think we were very energetic when we started, and it was like, is it really going to show up? And, and then we started looking at it and said, we have to change things internally, how we do things. Right. Um, and, but I think we've started to make those changes internally. We've, we've already absorbed some stuff that has OCP concepts, vanity free, stuff like that. Um, but now I'm seeing, seeing more and more equipment that I think we can really start to absorb at a, at a, at a higher rate. So we're pretty excited about the hardware. And, and this year, I think particularly, it could be a very good turning point. Matt? Yeah, I mean, uh, and I'll leave very brief. I think the open ecosystem that uh, this community has driven our ability to source uh, similar components and similar replaceable parts from different providers has been enormously beneficial uh, for us and has really changed the ecosystem enormously. So, but I, we're at the very beginning and, and it's going to take quite a while and, and so I think it's important to be both tenacious and, and consistently drive towards this goal. Just yeah, I think one of the things that we're very excited to see is that the servers that we're going to see five years from now don't look anything like they do today. And I think that's really kind of us as kind of end consumers of these kind of designs can really help drive forward what are these new designs going to be so that they're well tailored for our applications, for our infrastructure. And so that's really what I'm excited to see in the hardware space. Brian? Yeah, I think uh, um, similar to... I'm not going to tell anything, uh, say anything different than these guys have already talked about. But we're excited as well as the, with the opportunity of collaboration with um, other members of the, of the Open Compute um, project, and and uh, see if we can all together combine, um, change the designs and and make things more efficient and um, and hopefully put some pressure on on uh, the suppliers to to address the enterprise market as well as they have the hyperscale market. Cool, thank you, thank you. All right, guys, we're gonna move this to the next segment on open compute contributions, focusing with, we're gonna start off with Bob Thurston on this round. So how are you guys bringing all the open stuff together to maximize enterprise impact? For example, like Fidelity's NECTRAC project. Uh, Bob, please also share with everyone uh, whatever you can about the Open Sensor Network project. And just for context for folks here in the audience, by the way, Bob and I had collaborated a lot last year on um, what was called the Open Sensor Network around lots of sensors, lots of microcontrollers. We, yes, we did Raspberry Pis with SSDs using Cassandra and Hadoop as back end, but this was for monitoring and gauging uh, atmospheric temperature, humidity, other things that are going on inside of, uh, of data centers. Very, very cool project. So Bob, take it away. Sure, so again, thanks for everybody coming. I think it's great to see such a large group out here. Um, so, as we were just saying about the hardware, is one of the problems was how do we absorb the hardware and how do we how do we take it in? Frank talked in his talk earlier this morning about you know the consuming, right? We're we're supposed to be consuming by now, um, probably greater than we are, um, and so we had to do things internally to figure out how do we start consuming the hardware. We started a project um, called NextRack. Um, it's not a project that ever ends. It's, it's a constant iteration of the equipment in the rack uh, internally. It's to look at the servers. OK, can we move to a, uh, an OCP server? It's to look at the storage. It's to look at cables. It's to look at sensors. It's to look at everything in the rack. Um, 
constantly iterating and, and improving, right? Driving down price, increasing stability, um, and, and embracing things like open compute. Um, we, we sort of started with, um, you know, when you talked about contributions, you know, Fidelity donated uh, the Open Bridge Rack, which was our design of a rack uh, done by Bron Brian Obenesser, um, who, which, which allows us to go from 19 inch to, to 21 and a half inch, right? Because we're still absorbing 19 inch equipment, um, but we didn't want to be buying racks and then throwing them away and buying 21 and a half because we hope to be absorbing 21 and a half very soon. Um, so it's a conversion, you, you can see it out there, there's a number of manufacturers manufacturing it. We think this is uh, an awesome, it's a, sort of our bridge point into, um, into open compute. So we start with that as our rack. It's like, okay, now we got our rack, well what do we put in it, right? Um, and, and just constantly iterating and improving on that. The, uh, the open sensor network was sort of the idea is, okay, how do we take our open bridge rack and make it our smart open bridge rack, right? So, um, you know, the idea of, of a lot of data, I think a few years ago, would have been, well, what would you do, do with knowing the temperature and humidity and so many points within the data center? Well, you couldn't do anything with it, right? But now with Hadoop and big data, the, the idea of uh, being able to actually use this data. So what it is, pretty simple, Raspberry Pi concept with some code. Um, we've, we've built our own sensors, had it shipped off uh, to be uh, manufactured. We put a couple in the front, put a couple in the back. Uh, we are getting temperature, humidity. We're th thinking about, uh, you know, particle. You know, we can sense doors opening and closing, stuff like that. Um, you know, uh, the ideas of what we could do with it, and again, you know, love to see a community start working on this and expand what you can do. Then get that data into a Hadoop and then start writing apps to then feed that data back out and how can we do it? Can we, can we improve on cooling, power, uh, usage and start to save some money to make up for that cost. So that's where our project is. It's very early, but um, we certainly, if it gets anywhere, we'll certainly be happy to share it here. So, Cool. Matthew, anything to add to? Uh? I, I'm, I commend Fidelity and others <laughs> for contributing. Uh, and I, I think it's great. I mean, the way we build a community is by all of us participating. So right. okay. only good things. Justin? You know, I, I think really one of the good things with kind of the open compute project in the community is that since Fidelity has kind of, you know, basically open kind of their uh, open rack design, one of the things that kind of from Bloomberg, we've been basically having conversations with kind of the Fidelity team around, all right, how do we take, you know, what Fidelity has done and how do we bring that into our environment where we don't necessarily have exactly the same constraints that Fidelity does, but something that we're looking at collaborating and basically contributing that back and say, hey, you know, yes, we started with kind of what Fidelity has done and then, okay, how do we take that and, and adapt that to Bloomberg? So I think that's something that we're definitely trying to get that ecosystem of uh, collaboration. Right. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing to add. Okay. Go Bob. Go. <laughs> <laughs> go Bob. Okay. Okay. I have to. I have to give Bob a lot of credit. The sensor network thing. Uh, he's being very modest about this project. Uh, we had been looking at. I think it was over 30 semiconductors for different atmospheric and air water quality things. So stay tuned. Potentially really really cool project. All right. We're moving on to the next segment. Mr. Matthew List. We're going to talk about open networking. What are your insights regarding the true benefits and interests of open networking? Is it open hardware, open software, developer tools, anything else? How do you compare CapEx savings versus degrees of operating expense or OpEx impacts via the open Linux distros, only bare metal provisioning, automation, developer tools, and so on? And last, what have you observed and exper experienced as barriers to adoption for open networking? Is it the ODMs, the integrators, the technologies? What the heck else? Well, I think there, there are really three key benefits from disaggregation um, that we, we see. And, and so primary, I mean, if I think about the primary benefit today, is certainly uh, an ability to run the same tool chain, the same software chain that we run for the rest of our infrastructure. And so an ability to run, let's say, Ansible. So we use Ansible as our config management uh, tooling, and we can use Ansible to configure both our servers and our switches in a very similar ma manner. Same goes for monitoring syslog, et cetera. So you're running a similar stack. So operationally, you are really um, getting a lot of benefit from, from that. So, so certainly for us, that has been the, the, the number one benefit today. Secondly, clearly, you, you get price transparency. And so by disaggregating, you're getting price transparency on the hardware and price transparency on the software, which allows you then to understand where, what, you, what you value and, where, and how you want to make your investments. And so that, that's been a very positive thing, because now we understand 
the, the cost of the supply chain in far more detail than we did historically. And then thirdly, and this is what I think is a real long-term benefit, although it will take time to evolve, is I foresee a, an ecosystem of network applications that can run on top of a generic, what I think of as a generic network operating system with huge amount of benefits. You can think of the, all the security appliances out there today, all of the various monitoring appliances, et cetera, that exist as separate devices, and there's no reason why these cannot exist as software applications that run on top of a open network operating system. And so long term, uh, I think we're, we're going to see this whole ecosystem evolve, similar to what we saw in the service space with the evolution of Linux and an open platform. Of course, it will take time, but, but I think that's the, the real long term benefit. In terms of you know, barriers to adoption, I just think it's a, it's a nascent ecosystem. So there's still a lot of, um, you know, we're very early in the cycle. And so in terms of both the hardware, the software stack, the OS stack, et cetera, there's a lot of movement. But I think this community, I mean, three years ago when we started, actually four, we didn't discuss networks at all. So that wasn't even a topic within open computing. The last couple of years, we've seen real traction there. We've seen traction in other communities like Open Network Foundation, et cetera. Yeah. So I actually think this, the, there's a massive shift going on, and, and I'm very excited about everything we've seen in the last uh, two to three years in this space. So, so I just think, I don't think there's really barriers. It just, it takes a bit of time. Okay, and, cool. And we're, we're getting there. Got it, got it, got it. Justin? So I think, you know, there's kind of the, on the networking side, I think one of the things that we want to see is kind of the interoperability and kind of the standards. And it's basically we're trying to move towards, okay, we're going to use BGP and we're going to go use kind of different cabling. And, you know, one of the very specific things that we have to spend a lot of time talking to the supply chain about is the fact of kind of the, the locking of the, kind of the vendor cable and being able to go plug in uh, a switch to another, you know, leaf switch to a spine switch, and everybody's like, you have to go use our cable. And the actuality of it that doesn't, because if I have to use vendor A to talk to vendor B, but I have to use vendor A's cable, well, vendor B's cable isn't going to recognize it. And so this is really just <laughs> as a practicality issue, we have to have this openness in kind of the hardware specification. And people come like, oh, you're just going to use inferior parts. And like, that's not what we're trying to do. We are actually trying to get the best product. We're trying to you know, use the right tool for the right job. And so it really is getting that interoperability, getting those standards are so critical for us in the networking space. Right? Yeah, so Capital One's very interested in, in open networking for a lot of the things that Matthew talked about. We're also um, very interested in the, the ancillary benefits that that network simplification that Justin was talking about. So maybe we can get rid of a lot of layer two adjacency right. um, issues that we have. Um, and what that will drive for us is, a, is maybe a change in behavior um, with our developer community in the application space. So um, applications will need to change to, to accommodate a, a, a more simplified network. So we're also interested in, in uh, that aspect of it besides the other things that, that the guys talked about. Grant? So uh, I'm gonna amplify just a little bit what Brian said. I think it's about, at least for, for me, it's a, it's a lot about simplicity. Uh, what we want to do is, is that you know, the, the, especially in the top rack switch, it does a fairly simple set of things, and we like just a simple OS to to do that. And so I think the promise of both the commodity hardware and the software on top of it, you know, has really tremendous promise. Bob. So I, I would just add that again, all the same things everybody else said. I'd reemphasize what you've already heard here is the operational model and bringing it to you know, kind of blowing the silos or bringing the silos together some. Um, by having, uh, I refer to internally, I talk about running Linux for my servers, my switches, and my storage, and I sort of call it the one OS to rule them all. Not that Linux, it has to be Linux, that, that, that doesn't matter. It's just that one thing, and as he said, one monitoring, one authorization system, one automation system. I mean, we've got millions of them for all the different stacks, and managing all this is, is crazy. Um, it will help bring silos together, right? Someone's trying to automate something in the network face, you can go ask a server guy. Today they can't because they just don't talk the same language. So I, I think that's really what I, I look forward to seeing is open networking and, and further all of our infrastructure. Cool, cool. All right, guys, thank you. That was, that was very good, that was very good. Next segment is going to be on open software, and we're going to start with Justin Ehrenkranz on, on this one. So in prep, what do you think about broader adoption of ONI or the open network install environment the op for open source bare metal provisioning, how do you see it expanded to also support servers in addition to just switches? Is there potentially anything else? 
And regarding IPMI, what do you think about creation of a 100% open source language independent REST API for server IPMI interfacing? What automation tools are most useful and beneficial? And please include in your discussion the, the GitHub contributions that you guys did at, at Bloomberg about the incredible Hadoop and OpenStack code and how-to sharing guides that are really, really cool. And then last, if you have time, I don't, I don't know, what are other automation tools that are potentially useful and beneficial? Any experience with Vagrant, Docker, CoreOS Rocket, Kubernetes, et cetera, et cetera, so. All right, well, again, thank you. Um, so kind of on the first one about kind of the ONI, and I think, you know, definitely we see this kind of convergence of kind of the switches and, and, and the server infrastructure, and they're, they're not going to be that dissimilar going forward, but I think one of the things in the networking space that they've done a good job is talk about the zero touch provisioning. I install a switch and it generally can basically self-configure that. We're not there yet on kind of our server infrastructure and kind of the challenge that we're going to have to think about is how do we get it to um, do that? So how do we take some of the lessons that you know have been applied in the switching space? And one of the things for us at Bloomberg is we have shifted from deploying individual servers to basically deploying racks. And we're no longer thinking about, all right, I have to get this individual server, now I need to bring up this rack. And so this is really kind of a key thing is you have to have kind of this automation, you have to have this kind of configuration um, ability. Now, as you add all of these machines to kind of uh, Peter's point about IPMI, and I think one of the things that Frank mentioned earlier was the early OCP designs really kind of probably skimp too much on the remote manageability of the systems. I don't think kind of as an end consumer, I need all of the bells and whistles that come in today, kind of high end remote access, remote management. I need something in the middle. And I think we're starting to get to that point where we have too much and it interferes with our servers and too less where it's just not enough. And I think we're getting closer to the point of this uh, middle ground where, all right, yes, this is something that we can um, deploy at scale. To the third point about kind of what kind of the software changes, and I think this is probably the biggest driving force for us as to adopt open compute, is we're changing the way our applications are being written. And you know, you, you hear you know the Microsoft folks talk about tech versus cattle. And when I have kind of these precious snowflakes or machine, I don't have to worry about automation. I'm going to do all I can to preserve it. When I have this cattle model, I have to be able to go and automate it. I have to be, I can't no longer rely on individual server. I have to think about managing it at scale. And it really forces you to have and adopt practices that are really strong around automation. And kind of to that front, one of the things that we've done at Bloomberg is we've basically open sourced all of our uh, chef recipes for um, uh, OpenStack as well as our Hadoop. And this is exactly the same uh, recipes and infrastructure that we use internally within Bloomberg to run our production OpenStack and our Hadoop uh, environments. And so anybody out there can go to github.com slash Bloomberg. They can look at our recipes for our OpenStack and our uh, Hadoop environment, take a look at it, and really be able to uh, kind of contribute back. And again, collaborate. Pull requests are definitely welcome. To the fourth point, of the um, kind of other tools out there. And I think, you know, there's a lot of kind of tools around, you know, kind of Peter mentioned, you know, Vagrant and, and Docker, and you see things like um, Kubernetes and Mesos, and you see kind of all of these kind of container technologies. Mark was talking about a little bit earlier, you know, with the Ubuntu demonstrations with some of that. I think, you know, there really is an interesting paradigm, but I don't think everything is quite caught up to it. And kind of the phrase I've been using is, as long as you're not interested in security, not interested in storage scalability, you're not interested in networking, containers are fine, go ahead and use them in production. <laughs> it's not the case. And, but one of the great things with the open source community is they're really good at taking these hard fundamental problems. I have no doubt that you know, we will see kind of all of these issues addressed with kind of the containers and, you know, that we will be able to have great security. We will be able to have kind of great networking and great storage performance. I expect we will solve all of those. However, that's not where it is today. Will it be there five years from now? Probably will be. You know, what can we do as a kind of a community together to make that, pull that in, do that faster? Um, and so I think that's really kind of very critical 
you know, and I think, you know, definitely you see tools like, you know, Vagrant that are focused on creating that consistent developer environment. Right. Right. And that's something that we really like. And, you know, you check out our, you know, GitHub repositories and our stuff. We use Vagrant to basically bring it up and bootstrap the environment. You need something to get you started. And I, I, we really are big fans of kind of Vagrant and uh, all the infrastructure there. Cool, cool. Thank you. That was, that was awesome. That was awesome. Bry? Yeah. So. Uh, you're supposed to talk about APIs also, but I, I'll address that a little bit. Sure. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we we are we are also, uh, you know, containers are getting ready. I think to go um, nuts in in Capital One. So we're in the same spot, right? So we're we've got uh, we're playing with Kubernetes, and we've got a couple of groups that are doing Mesos and Marathon, and and so we we think uh, we're along the same lines there. Uh, we think it's got a little little ways to go before it's ready for. For production, but we really like the the possibilities of portability with with the containers. I think that uh, in terms of uh, an API, so you, you talked about the management. Uh, you know, we we would love to see that. So pick your talk knock tool of choice. We'd love to be able to feed that. Um, you know, regardless of where it's coming from, everybody knows. You know, if you change if you change a major vendor, you're signing up for a whole new suite of tools, a whole new suite of interfaces, and and it's uh, it's it's fairly disruptive. So um, anything that we can do that's, that standardizes that interface and, and makes that API well known and understood um, would be a huge benefit. Agreed, cool. Grant? So very quickly, I, I think, you know, again, to, it's about simplicity. Yep. Um, you know, when I heard about uh, Aaron's, uh, you know, pets and uh, cattle model, I extended it a little bit. <laughs> so it's, it's basically pets, elephants, because elephants, when they fall, you got to replace them with elephants. <laughs> take a long time to make. Cattle, they're much more malleable, uh, less destructive, shorter lifestyle. And, and I added one to the end, which is insects, because, <laughs> you know, insects swarm, uh, very, very short lifetime, and they're very simple to manage and very um, efficient in the uh, ecology. So I think we just need to keep driving towards more and more simplicity and automation if we're going to scale. Grant was scaring me there for a second because I thought he was going to use the word pig and then stare at me. So I'm <laughs> glad that uh, luckily I didn't have that. Bob, so I'll ahead. just say one quick thing to actually extend on yours <laughs> just occurred to me was uh, so there's one more thing. So it's 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 pets, right? But it's really it's really grandma. We've had some failures. It's like that isn't a pet. It's grandma. Everybody get yeah. help her up. Let's go. <laughs> right. So right. Matt. Yeah. The, the, the one thing that Justin said, which I think is incredibly important, is you need to be dogmatic about automation. And so our experience has been, if you don't automate everything, you're going to fail. And so being right. utterly dogmatic and driving that 100% automation on both how you build and how you supply services is really key to, to driving scale in our environment. And you know, our, to be very fair, us as enterprise are not being great at doing that historically. So we, we now see the light. Yeah, just to borrow from my presentation last year, I, uh, when I did the open networking thing, I said copy-paste was the state of the art for a lot of this stuff. So I'm, um, my fingers are crossed that we get to emerge from, from that whole... Okay. Okay, last. We're almost, uh, we're almost there. Final segment. We're going to uh, start with Mr. Brian Armstrong again. And this is going to be, what's it like to be new to open compute? So Brian, what's your firm's plan for new entry to OCP? Collaborations, contributions, and other stuff. Uh, you've got Silver membership. We've been talking about open compute documentation contributions, truly open tools, open networking, and others. What is it about OCP that attracted you in the management chain? And finally, in contrast to a number of us, we'd like you to start uh, with uh, Brian's refresh and the new open compute perspective versus all the rest of us, too. So being the new guy, what's it like? Sure. Yeah, so we, we've signed up to become Silver members of, of open compute. Uh, I think that you know, it's no different than uh, everybody here, the way they're thinking about the community in general and open source in, in general. So Capital One's gone to open source in, in a pretty um, pretty big way, and we're looking to do the same thing in the infrastructure space. And I, you know, I remember a, a slide from this morning, Frank's slide, where he talked about you know, um, collaboration, then contribution, and, yep. and we're kind of attacking it a little bit uh, from the side. So we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna figure out where we can contribute um, as quickly as we can. We're doing a lot of collaboration uh, with some of the guys up here, as a matter of fact, um, and, and some of the, our friends on the, on the West Coast as well. Um, so we're, we're doing a lot of learning, but at the same time, we're figuring out maybe where there are some gaps where we can, we can make an actual uh, contribution. So we're, we are not in this um, 
uh, joining OCP to not contribute. So we're we're figuring that out um, as quickly as we can. We think we'll okay. um, be able to make some awesome welcome aboard. contributions. That's so guys, we're almost uh, we're almost out of time. Um, what I think I'm going to do is jump to the uh, the final thing where we were calling it our closing segment, lightning round. We're going to start with Grant. I'm sorry. In case you guys want, so did, you, did you guys want to add nope. anything on the? I apologize. Yeah, no. I, I think we're good. Got 30 seconds. We'll so, start, yeah. okay. so uh, lightning round. Uh, two things. Uh, if you want to learn more about the Goldman Sachs deployment and the reasons, there's a talk. I think it's 3:45 by Don Duet. Um, He'll, he'll talk I extensively about uh, wow, Don, uh, yeah. about how, how we uh, went about this as well. We have a booth. We're right next to the buffet line, by the way. Ooh. So please, please make sure to stop by and talk to us. Uh, we're not selling anything. All we're doing is being here, showing support for OCP, and we're certainly willing to talk to you about you know our deployment as much as we possibly can. Thank you. Cool. So I'll just add, uh, it's been awesome to be part of OCP, mainly because all the things we've already talked about, but the collaboration, you know, if you think 10 years ago that the five of us would have been talking together and collaborating, I think it's, it's just insane. <laughs> I mean, we've worked together on different projects, you know, some of it a couple of, some of us, all of us, uh, and, and it's just awesome. It's been a learning experience for all of us. It's helped all of our customers and it helps, it helps all of our customers together, right, equally, so. Yeah, and to any of you that are end users out there, participate. Yeah. Participate in the workshops, participate uh, on the calls, be an active member of this community, that's the way we drive it forward. Yeah, and I think, you know, very much kind of the phrase I've used in the past year, the rising tide lifts all boats, and kind of all of us kind of collaborating together. And one comment I'll add to um, kind of Grant's comment, although we're not selling stuff, we're buying stuff. <laughs> and I think this is really kind of for us to really say, this is what we want. We have this vision for where we want to take our infrastructure. How can we kind of find the right solution to address that? Yeah, I don't have anything else to add. Um, just happy to be a part of the community and, and looking forward to working with everybody and collaborating uh, with as many people as we possibly can. Well, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, thank you for staying. It's almost lunchtime, and I want to say thank you for listening and attending, being this close to lunch, and uh, look forward to collaborating with everyone. And I uh, hope you guys have a great week here at Open Compute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.